So in this video what I'll show you how to do is uh, how to use Excel to convert this class data for plantain uh, phosphatase activity into a graph that looks something uh, like this which has uh, a representation of the rate of PMP production on the y-axis, uh, the samples uh, x, y, and z on the x-axis and two series uh, which are the activities at pH 5 and also the activities at uh, pH 10. So what we'll do is we'll pop back to the original uh, class spreadsheet which looks like this and what we have here is uh, each pair's data is representative of one of these replicates um, and so what the spreadsheet has been designed to do is to actually calculate uh, the average for example of sample x at pH 5 uh, and put that value here it's got the average of the rate of PMP production of sample x at pH 10 and it calculates the, at that average and puts it uh, down here. And so essentially what we want to do is we want to actually plot a graph using the averages of the replicates um, because the replicates are our raw data and the averages are our process data. And so what we want to do is uh, scroll down and already the graph, oh, sorry, the uh, spreadsheet has these averages calculated. And so we want to actually insert a column graph that represents uh, these numbers here. And so the way to insert a graph in Excel and to have most control over the data in the graph is to actually insert a blank graph. And to, to do that, uh, you want to click somewhere into the spreadsheet which has no data. And then you want to come up here to the Insert tab. Uh, and then because we want to insert a column graph, we click the column icon. And we just want a simple 2D clustered column graph. And so we click on this button here and Excel should give us a totally blank graph. Now. To specify the data that Excel should put, uh, draw on this graph, we want to right click onto the graph uh, and then we select the select data option. And what this will do is it will open up a little dialog which allows us to pick uh, the data we want Excel to put into the graph. And so we want to add two series. A uh, series is just a bunch of columns and so one of the series what we want to add is uh, for pH 5 and the other series we want to add is for pH 10. And so to add a series we just click uh, here on the add button and what it'll do is it'll ask us uh, what the name of the series is and the values we want to plot and so the series name that we want to use here is just pH 5 so we can type that down pH 5 uh, and the series values here right now it's plotting one but we don't want to do that so we want to press backspace until it gets rid of everything in this uh, in this text box and then we want to specify uh, the pH 5 averages for sample X, Y, and Z. So essentially we click in this box, then we come back to our spreadsheet and we highlight uh, these values. And then what we see is the graph is uh, uh, showing these values already. So we've got, we've got our series, um, uh, pH 5 series up there, and so we click OK. Next thing to do is add our pH 10 series. So again, we come to uh, click the Add button, specify a name, so pH 10, the series values, we delete anything that's in the box right now, and then we select the pH 10 values uh, from the spreadsheet, and then we click OK again. Now what was, you'll see is that the X, um, the X values uh, here is just uh, labeled currently as 1, 2, 3, but instead of 1, 2, 3, we want it to be called sample X, sample Y, and sample Z. And in order to specify that, we want to come, here, uh, come over here to the horizontal axis label uh, edit button. You click edit. And essentially here you can select uh, from your spreadsheet the names you want to call uh, these data points. And so essentially we want to call them sample X, sample Y, sample Z. And so we just come here and highlight those uh, cells. And then we click OK. And what you'll see is Excel is now graphing X, uh, sample X, sample Y, and sample Z on the X axis. So that's uh, fantastic so far. Okay, so we're halfway there. We just click OK to get out of this uh, select data source dialog box. The horizontal axes um, grid lines don't really do much for us, and so we can delete them. To do that, just click onto them and hit delete on the keyboard. The other thing we notice uh, here is that the number of decimal points for our Y axis is there. There's too great, and so what we want to do is we want to kill them off. Uh, to do that, to edit the vertical axis, we essentially click there, and then we double click and that'll open up the format access uh, dialog box. And so here what we can see a few options. What we want to focus on here is the number option. And right now you can see that it's uh, actually plotting uh, three decimal places. So instead of three decimal places, we want to actually to plot no decimal places uh, because our, our numbers range from zero 
to 14. And so what we want to do, kill off the 3, type in 0, and then uh, click close. And what that'll do is it'll kill off the uh, unnecessary decimal points. Okay, so the next thing to do is to actually put a uh, Y axis title on because we don't know what 0 to 14 means. And so to do that, you come up here to the chart tools layout tab and then you want to insert an axis title and so you click on the axis title button then you can uh, specify either a horizontal title or a vertical title we want to add a vertical one here and so we essentially add a vertical title by clicking onto the button um, and then what will happen is uh, the axis title will show up here and so in order to type in an axis title you just hit something with the keyboard let's type rate of PMP production uh, and let's put a units there, it's always good to have units, it's times 10 to the next minus 6 molar per minute. Okay, what you'll notice is that the minus 6 obviously is not uh, in superscript because we haven't specified it yet. So what we'll do is in order to specify the superscript we essentially want to come here, we'll highlight the minus 6 Okay, and then we'll come back up here to the home tab and we'll actually make that minus six superscript. To do that, you want to come by the home tab to this uh, button up here, which is uh, in the font area of this uh, tab. And so this actually brings up a dialog box which allows you to specify various settings for the font. And what we want to do is we want to set superscript. So we tick that, uh, we click OK. And then as we zoom out, what we'll see is that minus 6 now is in superscript, so that's fantastic. All right, so the last thing we want to add to the graph uh, are error bars. And so this spreadsheet has already automatically calculated for us, or has been designed to calculate for us, uh, a type of error called standard error. Now, standard error for uh, sample X a pH 5 is at this value down here. And so we want, for example, an error bar uh, that reaches up and down uh, plus 1.038 and also minus 1.038 uh, from this point here and etc etc. So what we uh, do in Excel in order to tell Excel to add the error bars onto a graph is we actually uh, add it by the series and so pH 5 the blue bars are our first series we want to add the error bars to. So we click on that series and you, what you can see is Excel has highlighted the data which it is plotting as a series and to add the error bars, uh, you come up to Chart Tools Layout, and then you come up to the Error Bars uh, little uh, option here. And what you'll see is that if you click Error Bars, what you want to do is you actually want to select more error bar options. And the reason for that is uh, because you want Excel uh, not to work out its own error bars, but you want to specify for Excel the type of values to put in. Um, Excel isn't very good at working out error bars automatically, so uh, it's always best to specify a custom value. So to do that, uh, we come down to error amount, and we click the custom option, and then we want to specify a value. You can see Excel has already plotted some error bars up here, uh, which are just um, a few percent by default, but we want to actually specify a particular value. So to do that custom, click the specify value button, and then right now you've got uh, it's essentially drawing plus one, and minus one, we would, but don't want that to happen, so we want to uh, highlight those and kill them off. What we want instead for uh, the pH 5 series is to plot these values down here. And in order to do that, we um, come up to the positive error value box, click into there, delete anything that's in there currently, and then we come back down to our spreadsheet and we select these values. The negative error value is just how low to draw the error bar, and again, we want to just uh, draw down one standard error and so what we do is we highlight those options again click OK um, and then click close and what you see is that these values so these values here have been plotted as the error for sample X at pH 5 sample Y at pH 5 and also sample Z at pH 5 so to do that for pH 10 we just click on the pH 10 series uh, again come up to chart tools layout select error bars select more error bars options and then in the dialog that pops up, we want to select Custom, Specify Value, and then delete anything that's in there currently. And then for the positive error value, this is for the pH 10 series, we want to select these three values here. And the negative as well, we want to select those three values and click OK, close, and what you see is our error bars are up there.
So what you see here is uh, for pH 10 sample X, for example, uh, this red column here, this error bar is essentially saying uh, that the standard error, well, this error bar is what we call plus minus standard error. So what you can see here is the standard error is 2.9. And so from here up to here, that's uh, 2.9. And from here down to here, that's also 2.9. Okay, so this is essentially the graph that we want to end up with. Uh, it shows the activities or the rates of PMP production uh, of the phosphatase samples um, in sample X, sample Y, sample Z at the uh, different pHs.